Good morning, guys. So yesterday, which was Tuesday, because we were out on Monday, the 23rd, we did learning objective number four, which says, I can explain how an author uses reasons and evidence to support a particular view in a text. So we talked about how the word explain simply means to tell. And we talked about reasons are another word for um, details. And we already know evidence is proof. So we're going to go ahead and underline that and put the word proof up there. And a particular view is what they think. And we know that text means whatever you're reading. You are reading. So if you go ahead and underline yours so that it looks just like Ms. Madrid's. Wait just a minute. All right, so the next thing is before I even bother to read this, I want to know why am I reading this. Not just because I gave it to you or not because somebody gave it to me. I want to know why, what questions do I have to answer? So what do I have to know? So I'm going to look at number 10. It says, what is the author's perspective in the above passage? So really the important words is what author's perspective above passage. So I'm going to go ahead and underline those what author's perspective above passage. An author's perspective is his point of view. So when I'm reading, I'm like, what is his point of view? What is he thinking? And then on number 11, this is my evidence. So remember that proof and evidence, right? Which detail from the above passage supports the author's position? So I'm going to put which detail supports author's position. And the reason I'm not underlining everything is because honestly, I don't need to know about above passage. I already know where it's coming from, right? Because we don't have anything else that we're reading. So here we go. When I'm reading, we're looking for what is his point of view or what does he think and what detail is going to support that. So here we go. An 8 p.m. curfew is just what children in our town need. Every morning I see them drag themselves to school. They look bleary-eyed from lack of sleep, and they drift off during their morning classes. If we had them all home and in bed by 8 o'clock, just think how much better they would be in class. So his point of view is kids need some sleep. And the way to get that is to get a curfew, which means like they have to be home and in bed by a certain time. And whether or not you agree with it, and whether or not you think you should stay up when you want, we're answering the question. So it doesn't matter what you personally think, right? So when I look at A, it says a curfew is not necessary. I know that that's not true because he's saying they need, it's what our kids need. So I'm going to go ahead and put an X on the A because I know that is not my answer. Number B says children do not need a set bedtime. Well, if it says if we had them all home and in bed by 8, that would be a set bedtime. So I'm going to go ahead and put an X on B as well. When I look at C, it says a curfew is needed to ensure children get a good night's sleep. That's looking really good, but we still have one more answer. You always read all of them because you never know. Sometimes C looks really good, but D is the right answer. So let me go ahead and put a question mark by C. If I look at number D, children can do fine in school even if they don't get sleep. Well, up here it says they fall asleep during their morning classes. So they're not, I don't think they're doing fine if they're falling asleep. How do you do your work if you're sleeping? So I'm going to put an X on D, which means we're left with C is definitely our answer. Now, when I look at number 11, it says which detail from the above passage supports the author's position. So which detail one of them in here supports or like helps pull up that they need to get a good night's sleep. So A, children look bleary eyed from lack of sleep. So we said that they need to have a good night's sleep. So I'm going to lack means not having it. So I'm going to put a question mark by A. It just might be, looks good. We'll find out. Number B, every morning children are early to school. 
didn't mention a word about kids being early to school. They were dragging themselves to school. So I'm going to put an X on B. On letter C, it says children are wide awake at school. Well, we know that's a lie because it says they're drifting off, which means fancy word for falling asleep. And last one, whoops, says children do well in class despite a lack of sleep. Um, says we see them dragging themselves to school. They're bleary-eyed, which means they're kind of like, uh, and they're drifting off. They're going to sleep. So I don't know how would they do well if they're sleeping. So we're going to put a D on, a X on D, and that leaves A as our answer. And that's how we can explain the reasons and evidence, details and proof about what the author is thinking. See you tomorrow.